All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, happy Wednesday. I got a little bit of snow outside today. It's, uh, it's a nice day out there. Uh, things are a little slick, so if you are driving around today, please give yourself a little extra time to stop and time to get where you're going. Uh, this morning I was driving in, definitely some slick spots out there. But um, yeah, that's my little uh, preamble about today. So what we're going to talk about today is holes. Holes in our material. Uh, on this template here, we've got some holes that we need to drill. And on this template here, we've got some holes that we need to uh, drill also. Not drill in the template, but drill on our leg pieces that we prepared the other day. So we're going to talk about countersink bits and pilot holes. Uh, what are they? What do they do? So a pilot hole is just simply a small drill bit. To this guy here, uh, this one has some tape on it as a marker uh, for a depth stop, but this is just a small drill bit, and that's what we use to drill a pilot hole. There are some important things about a pilot hole that we need to know. Uh, what we need to know is the rough diameter. of the fasteners we're using. Uh, pilot holes are designed uh, to basically pre-drill into a hard material or uh, drill a hole in so when you force something like a screw or a lag bolt uh, into a piece of wood, it does not split. Uh, what we do is, let's use a screw for example, just a number eight one inch long screw, uh, nothing really fancy about it, but make a comparison here, that and that, we need to have the drill bit smaller than the screw we're using. And what we should try and do is match the drill bit or get it slightly smaller than the shank size of the screw. Now we've got basically the shank and all these flutes, the spirals on there that help pull this down into the material, but also provide the grip uh, in the wood. So we drill a hole out that is as big as the screw is in diameter, including the flutes, we're not gonna get any grip in that wood. This is just gonna spin in there and twist. If it's slightly just smaller than this, what happens is you'll tighten, 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 all of a sudden it'll get loose and it will have stripped out the threads. Uh, we probably encounter that at some point if we work with screwdrivers and screws and things like that, maybe even bolts. It's never a good thing when it happens to bolts, uh, but it can happen. So. What I like to do is I like to pick a pilot hole or a drill bit for my pilot hole that is just slightly smaller than the shank of the screw. And that's going to give me a good secure fit. I'm going to get lots of grip from the flute here on the screw. We're going to be able to tighten that down nice and it's not going to split the wood. Um, there are a couple of things we need to know though. Uh, when we look at these screws, which big is that? that head shape has a taper on it. That taper can force itself down into the wood and cause that wood to split if we don't make accommodations for the head size of these. Now, I've split projects, uh, just not even thinking, I'm like, oh, let's just screw this together, pop the screws in, drill it in, and that head forces a piece apart and it splits. So that's never a good thing. Using a countersink drill bit will stop this from happening, hopefully. As long as you don't tighten it up too hard and too far, you should be able to have these screws, uh, be able to place them in your wood, have these heads slightly below flush, below the surface level of the wood, and not be able to split it. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys what a countersink bit is now. I'm gonna grab one, and we'll talk about that. So, a countersink drill bit is very similar to ropes, and I just drop it. Countersink drill bit is very similar to a regular drill bit. Uh, in fact, it does have a regular drill bit in it. So we'll bring this up a little closer, and you can see from here, up inside of here, there's a regular drill bit. This right here is the same as that one pop up hole drill bit. What we've done is we placed it inside of this countersink bit and secured it with a set screw. So 
if this breaks, we can actually change it and this whole piece isn't discarded. So we can change out this little bit. What I like about these is this is a stepped countersink. So we have our drill bit here, which will make a hole the size of our tank of our drill bit. Then we've got this little piece here for clearance. And then we've got this beveled edge up top here. It's kind of hard to see with the camera quality. Uh, but what this does is this creates a nice little happy home in the wood for our head of our screw. So if we compare the two, let's put it upside down. It's gonna make it a little easier. This taper and that taper side by side. Yeah, there you guys can see it there. That looks pretty good. And that makes it so we can put the screw head here into our material without the possibility of splitting it. So this will drill out a nice little bevel on the top of our piece and allow us to secure these nice and tight. Uh, when you're working on a project that has a nice finished surface, uh, say like these Kisha Sippy chairs, you don't want those screw heads sticking out above the wood level. Someone runs their hand across them and they can see those screw heads sticking out or they can feel them. It just doesn't give you that nice of a finish on the project. So what we like to do is we like to countersink a lot of these and get them right flush with the surface of the wood or even below. Not very far below, but just a little bit below. On thicker pieces of material uh, where they're not taking so much structural strength or stress from somebody sitting in them, say like a bookshelf or something, you can actually recess these into your wood a little farther, say half an inch. So you can use the countersink, drill to where the head would be flush, and then you can drill another, you know, three eighths of an inch in. Uh, that way this head of the screw is gonna be three eighths below the surface of your wood. And then what we do is we take a wooden dowel and we put some glue on it, pop it into that hole. So it sits right on top of this, use a flush cut saw, cut it off nice and flush and then sand it flat. That hides are screws, so they're no longer visible to anybody looking at it. You may see the dowel mark, but if you're doing something like staining it or painting it, that's gonna be hidden under your stain or finish, or paint your stain. And that's kind of a neat way of assembling things and hiding all your screw marks. Uh, because if you've got a really nice looking project and then six screws in the front of it, it kind of detracts from the overall aesthetic of it. And it's just good practice to kind of hide your uh, assembly marks and your you know, drill holes, things like that. A nice finished product, you should actually be able to look at it and go, how did he assemble this? I don't see any screw holes, I don't see nail holes, I don't see marks from an air nailer, uh, things like that. But it's kind of neat uh, to finish a project where you don't have any screw holes visible, anything like that. And it just gives a nice overall appearance. What we're going to do is we are going to talk about uh, where we need to place these on our material. So those legs I have from yesterday, uh, we are going to do some drawing on them. We're going to mark some stuff out. We're going to transfer some information from the templates to those pieces. And then once we have that done, we are going to drill out those holes. So I'll take it step by step through this, how I do it, how I've found uh, the best ways to be successful. And by the end of it, we should have some holes drilled out in our legs and our arms of our chair, not ourselves. And we want to keep our parts away from the drill press, right? Uh, I say parts, I mean hands, hair, stuff like that. That's just general safety. Um, these legs and arms of the uh, chair should have some holes in them when they're done. And we will pretty much be done with them for a while until we have to router anything. So after today's lesson, we will set those aside and we'll come back to them at a later date once we have more of our chair pieces ready to go. So let's do that now. What I've got here is the template for seat leg D. Now we're getting familiar with it. We've seen it a few times and we used it yesterday to cut out our uh, legs. And we cut the legs, we sanded the material, we made it nice, we sanded the inside curves, we sanded the outside curves, we showed you guys the tools for that. Hopefully you guys completed that quiz. And now we need to uh, work on the remaining pieces of information on this template. 
And on this template, there are some pieces of information we need to pay attention to. So we're going to take a look at this right here. And we're going to start reading some of the, let's see if I can get it in there. Yeah, start reading some of the templates. So here, uh, I can't read it backwards on the screen, but it says location of part A. Um, part A, that hand tools project you guys were working on. Remember the one where we cut the brace, did the chiseling, so people were lumberjacks to split their wood in half? Uh, that was part A. And so that gets included um, on this. Oh, actually, no, part A is a different piece. Sorry, I'm uh, confusing this with the arm. Part A goes on the arm, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, or your hand tools project goes on the arm, not part A. Part A goes on here. I'm all confused. Uh, but yeah, so we need to look at this information here. And this says clearance holes, counter sink outside. Uh, so very important to remember that. But we're actually going to write this information on our leg. So we have that with us at all times, uh, hopefully reducing the chance of uh, making a mistake. And then we're going to slide up here and we're going to look at this one. So up here we have a bit of information and four more holes. So what it says is location of part J. So this is where part J is going to be, and that's going to be the front leg. And this here says pilot hole. So these are going to be pilot holes. And these holes here are going to be countersunk clearance holes. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to show you guys the method that I use to transfer all of these hole locations because they are very important. If these holes are off a little bit, the chair isn't going to be assembled nicely. It's just not going to look good. And we're going to struggle when trying to fit the last few pieces together. Things won't line up. And you're going to have to bend and twist things. And your chair is going to sit down, sit on two legs and rock left and right. And just not give you an overall good end product. So I'm going to show you how I uh, transfer these measurements and how it's worked for me. It's been pretty good. I've done a few of these chairs and seem pretty successful. Uh, so I'll share that little tip with you. And we're going to do that right here behind me. Another two templates, one for the arm, one for the leg. Uh, we're going to work on the leg piece. Where it sets on the side. And we've got our two legs right here, arms off to the side. When I am working with two pieces, what we have to keep in mind is there's going to be a left and a right piece. It's going to be a pair. And we want our good side towards the outside of the chair. We want people to see our good side. So if we had something here where the boards weren't quite even and I didn't want to sand this all down because it makes it too thin overall, what we can do is we can place the side that isn't as pretty as the other side on the inside. Now what I've done is I'm working on two different chairs at the same time, uh, one for period one, one for period three, and it's hard to see, but right there is written, just nice and small, inside C2. Uh, C2 just simply means chair two. Uh, chair two is period three's chair. C1 is going to be period one's chair. Uh, but I always mark my inside. I don't mark anything on the outside because that's going to be our finished surface. And I don't want to put any extra pencil marks on there than I have to. Uh, to save time when at the very end and you're not sanding a whole bunch of stuff off. So when considering the fact we have a left and right, if I place these holes like this, and I drill my holes on this board, my countersink would be on the wrong side. It would be on the inside. I want them to be on the outside. So I'm actually flipping this board. I have this side marked as the inside. And we're going to create a pair, just like that. So this is how uh, we are going to be successful in making sure our holes are drilled properly the first time. Um, I have made some mistakes in the past. We've had to correct those mistakes doing this and it's never fun when you're ready to go and you go to assemble it and you're like ah darn these holes are on the wrong side and then to fix that what we have to do is we have to drill each one of those holes out to a half inch hole we have to cut half inch plugs glue them in let them dry for 24 hours sand them down and then re-drill them the next day so you're one day behind on that piece at minimum one day behind uh, so this is to hopefully save you guys some time and some pain and misery in case you guys make mistakes like I did. 
So the goal is not to make mistakes, but if we do, we should learn from our mistakes. Never just make a mistake and move on. Uh, use that as a learning opportunity because chances are you may be able to help another classmate in the future. You, you could see someone about to make the wrong decision. You'd be like, hey, let me help you for a second. I noticed you were doing this and this. Let's change that up to do it this way, and then that's going to be a little better. Uh, you don't have to be rude about it if you see a classmate doing it the wrong way, but just offer some friendly advice and uh, yeah, just let them know that uh, what they were doing was going to create a product that wasn't going to be as good as they were hoping, were hoping for. So we have our legs. We have our template. I'm going to line this template up with this first leg. I'll lay it right on top of there. And if I cut this out nicely, I shouldn't have any real gaps in here. So if we're looking at this here, I don't really have any gaps anywhere, not too big, not too small. Everything lines up down here as well. It all lines up nicely. So we did a good job cutting those out. Uh, on this template though, there are those whole locations. And the easiest way I found to mark them is to lay your template on top, like we just have. Make sure it's not gonna move on you. So I take my hand and I hold it down nice and firm. And then what I do is once I know I'm in the spot I wanna be, I take this fancy dental pick looking tool. Now you don't have to have one of these, but what you need to have is something with a good point on the end. And this has a good point on the end. And I use this point and I pop it down through this hole and I press and I make a little depression in the top of my wood. Just make a little center mark. And that's gonna tell me where I'm gonna drill. So I'm gonna do those for the front ones as well. So right here. Right here, right here, and right here. So I have those little marks poked in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to circle these for you so they're a little easier to see. I don't draw giant circles on them. Uh, like I said, I try and draw as little as possible on the good faces of this wood. But it doesn't stop there. What we need to do is we need to transfer the important information from this template to the seat leg. Uh, so these ones on the front are pilot holes. Instead of writing pilot holes, I'm going to write PH. And that will just tell me the information I need. On this one, that are clearance holes, countersunk outside. That is important. Uh, especially, especially the countersink outside language. Uh, we know this is the outside of our wood. This is the inside because we've already pre-marked that. So the countersink has to be on the outside. Uh, and to mark that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to abbreviate these. So clearance holes is going to be CH. And countersink outside. I'm just going to abbreviate it as CS-O. CS for countersink, dash O for outside. And I have that information written right there. And I like to keep all this information on here. Uh, you never know when you know we may end up being home for a week or two. So writing all the information on there keeps you back on track. When you come in the next time, you go, oh, clearance holes, countersink outside. Simple. You've already written your instructions on here, and it saves us a couple steps on trying to wrap our heads around it again after we come back from a long break or even a long weekend. So those are marked on there. And we're quickly going to mark. No, we're not even going to worry about when they are. We'll do that later. Uh, this will show us everything we need. Uh, so with this one though, what I wanted to show you guys is to mark this side. Obviously this template isn't going to be the right shape because this is going to be off the way. All we do is we flip the template upside down. That's going to give us a mirror image of this one. We're going to mark those holes 
Thanks for the last time. And, and then we'll just transfer the information as well. So counterfeit holes, pilot holes. We'll put that down. And that will help us with our building and locations. Doesn't that be complicated? Uh, I'm sure there's a way we could do this by creating measurements and whatnot, but these paper templates put on this backboard that we did uh, and filling those holes just really simplifies the process. If we're trying to make a bunch of these, we want to be as efficient as possible. So we want to look to save as much time as we can. And using something like this setup is going to help us with that. So this one's here, we're in clearing holes, C H, C S dash O, countersink outside. And then on the front, the circle those ones. Those are our pilot holes. So the P H. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relocate the camera. I'm going to try and get it nice and close to the drill press here. And hopefully you guys can see some of this drill action happening. Good, but it's not near as close as I wanted. So, to suffice, unless I can get us a little closer to the drill press. Is a little bit of space here. And I'll show you guys with this drill bit here. Uh, the chuck has three fingers. It's going to come down and grab over top of this. You don't want to bottom this edge out in the chuck because uh, as the chuck tightens, it actually pulls the bit up slightly into the body of the chuck. And if the uh, teeth or jaws are already against this, it won't be able to pull it up any farther. So you won't get a tight, secure uh, grip on this bit. And we want this bit to be nice and secure. So that's in here. Uh, this drill bit is a manual setup. So you will have to control the depth of how far you drill. So you will have to pay attention to that. Um, what we want is a hole that uh, basically has a nice little ring on it. And that ring will be about the same size as a tapered head of a screw. And I will show you guys that, and I will drill one here, and I will show you guys what that should look like. And then, uh, yeah, we'll continue drilling on the rest of the holes. We'll move over, we'll drill some pilot holes. So let's do that now. So the safety glasses are gonna be on, and we will drill these holes here. So let's get that happening for you. First thing I always do is line it up. And what I notice is this distance here, 
uh, from the collar of the countersink bit to the end of the drill bit is about the equivalent distance from here, top of this wood, to the bottom of my sacrificial piece. So that means we may actually end up drilling into the table a little bit, which is something we don't want to do. So I'm going to get a little bit thicker material placed under here so we don't drill into the table. All right, so I've taken a second piece of sacrificial wood. I put it under here, and this is gonna prevent us drilling through this piece and this piece into the table, because right now I won't be able to drill through that. So let's rock and roll with one of these holes and show you guys what it should look like. So we're gonna line it up. All right, there's where I want it. Uh, I'm gonna keep my hands as far as I can away from the drill bit while still holding down the piece. With a small drill bit like this, we don't need to clamp down our piece, we just need to have good grip on it. And uh, we just need to pay attention. If it does start to twist uh, out of our grip, then what we'll do is we'll shut this off quickly and we will fasten this down to the table, but I don't think we're gonna have that issue today. So, you're gonna start this up, drill in, and drill down so the whole drill bit's in there. Now we're gonna do the first part of the countersink. Now we're gonna a little more. We're gonna stop that right there. Uh, with this, bring this piece out. I'll show you guys here. Uh, we've drilled one hole in here, and the hole is exactly what we want. The screw will fit in there nicely and the head will be just below flush. So we're gonna drill the other three, and then we're gonna move on to pilot holes. So there we go, I've got those four holes drilled out quite nice. Uh, they look good, they're all pretty even and consistent depth. Uh, we wanna try and keep them nice and even. We don't wanna go super deep with one um, because we do need to have structural integrity for this leg. Uh, we don't want this leg to split on us. Uh, things can happen. We can drill too deep by accident. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a piece of scrap and we will drill deeper than we should. That's to kind of outline what could happen if you're not paying attention while drilling. All right, so I've got this little basically six by six square here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna not pay attention while we're drilling and we're just gonna drill deep, see what happens. So here, you can see the depth of the hole that we've drilled quite deep. Uh, if we're not paying attention with that countersink, we could actually drill right through this piece without an issue. That is definitely not what we want. So we won't have any material here to fasten to the next piece behind it. So we need to have a countersink that is just slightly below flush instead of burying that bit half inch down in your three quarter inch piece of board. So now we're going to talk pilot holes. So we're going to take a little turn over here. 
And this is where I'm going to drill my pilot holes. I got a little drill bit in there. Sir. There you should be able to see that. Hopefully, I can stay out of the way while we're working. Uh, I have a happy view of what we're doing. So once again, I'm going to put my sacrificial material, I'm just moving it from one drill press to the next, and that's going to prevent me from drilling into this table. We don't want to damage those drill bits or damage the table. So we've got our piece here. Uh, we're going to work on these four um, uh, pilot holes in the front. Hopefully you guys can see those. We're going to drill those out nice today. So let's do that. Up here, go where I want it. Yeah, and I like that where it is. What we're going to do, we're going to hold that down, turn this on, and then we're going to drill. There you go, back here. There you go, you can see better now. Go straight in, we're going to drill right through this piece. Right to the bottom of the green tape that I put on the drill bit. Right there. So the hole was in one side, out the other, just like we want. Here's the second one. Second two. The third one. There and our last one. All right, so on there, about four holes drilled out nice and neat. Uh, what I do and why I draw these little circles on here is that's just so you guys can see them so I can find them quickly. Also, I do draw little ones on because if this is gonna be exposed when the project is done, you don't wanna have too much sanding you have to do. You don't wanna have to write or sand off sentences on here. Like it says, if you wrote clearance hole countersink on outside, you have a lot of work to take that off. But just putting the uh, abbreviations on there, just like that, that will sand off quite quickly and it'll save us some time at the end. So planning your actions a little bit is really gonna be beneficial at the end of it. Let's move back to the table. Yes, I will be. If I will be marking the latest quiz uh, by hand, yes, I will. Uh, there are some questions on there that uh, are written. All right, we have these holes drilled out in this piece, which is awesome. Uh, One here is going to be the mirror image, so that will go on the other side. I'm not going to drill these in front of you guys today. You guys saw one, that's going to be enough. Uh, arms are going to be the same thing. There is nothing really different on the arms than what's on the legs. Uh, there's only two holes we have to drill on the arms right now, but there is another piece we'll attach to it at a later date. I'll show you guys that when we get to that process. So, the important things today are definitely paying attention to the language that is written on these pieces. Uh, specifically, what type of holes. Clearance hole, or a, or a countersink hole, and a pilot hole. So a pilot hole is just simply a straight hole with no tape or anything, uh, drilled so that when you uh, take your fastener and you screw it into the piece of wood, that it doesn't cause that piece of wood to split accidentally. 
uh, a countersink allows you to cut a space for the head of that screw so that when the screw enters the material, and I'll put one in one of these holes just to show you guys, that a screw is below the surface level. So I'm just going to tighten this one in here, and then I'll bring it up to the camera. I'll show you guys that. So I've just placed a screw in this hole here. And what you guys can see is if we tip it on an angle, see how it's just slightly below the surface level? That's what we want. We don't want it way down deep and we don't want it right, right flush. Because if it's right flush and you're trying to sand this, you're gonna wreck your sandpaper. And also you're gonna take the finish off the head of this and that may rust. You also may transfer a bit of metal dust or iron onto your wood and that could also rust, so not a good thing. And it's gonna leave a dirty smear on there. Not what we want, so we want just below flush, unless we're doing a hidden uh, screw, and then we drill it deeper, we put a plug in there, dowel, we cut it off, and it make it look good. Uh, just for reference for you guys, here is a square, and you can see that there's definitely a screw below surface level. So that is what we're looking for with this. Now I want to outline a little bit what should happen if we don't use a pilot hole for our material. Pilot hole or a countersink hole. So I'm going to take a piece of scrap material and I'm going to put four screws in it and I'm going to use the heads of those screws like a wedge and I'm going to split that material. Uh, when we fasten pieces it's often not just one screw that we use to fasten. So I'm going to use a few screws and one of these pieces here and I'm gonna see if I can get it to split and this is basically a what not to do so we're gonna take this one screw out and try to use it I've got it done with the pilot hole and we are going to force a few screws into this board now you're not gonna be using one of these when you assemble it although I do encourage it some people do like to go to impact drivers so I've got an impact driver here, I've got my screw, and I put a few in a row, and we will see what happens to the piece when we don't use a uh, countersink bit. So two screws, as you can see, those heads, what they did is they forced that wood apart and then yeah, split wide open. So this is what we want to avoid. Uh, you know, this is not what we want to have happen to our chairs, especially when we put so much time and effort into them. So taking the time to drill, countersink these out, is definitely going to be a good thing. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna countersink two holes right over here. We can make a direct comparison. We'll put two screws in there. So these screws are both below flush, just like we want. See that little lip right here? Uh, I put them about the exact same space, distance from the edge, space apart, not quite in line, but it doesn't really matter. As you can see, there's no cracking, no cracking on the end, no cracking on the back side. So countersink does work. It is awesome, it's a great way of doing things, and it's gonna save you some big headaches in the future. Uh, when I'm working on a project like this. So that is it for today, folks. Thank you for joining me. I do appreciate it. I hope you're all well and safe at home, warm, dry, happy, healthy. That is what I hope for you guys all. Um, 
there is going to be a quiz. It is open. Uh, you guys can head out and do that right now. I'm going to stop the camera and the mic. Uh, I will turn that off. I will be here for about 15 minutes. If you guys have any questions, ask me a question, throw it in the chat, shoot me an email. You guys know the drill. Also, if you haven't put your name in the chat, drop your name in the chat. Please do that now. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a great day.